let's wrap up what then is the assignment of prayer the assignment of the word like prayer I have found from scripture four principal assignments of the word in the life of the believer do not forget what we are discussing this 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 morning the patterns that make for growth and for stature and we identified two principal patterns according to Acts 6 4 the ministry of prayer the ministry of the word and my assignment was to help to bridge that gap that age-long divide that has been in the body of Christ whether you are given the liberty to choose prayer or the word we are never given any liberty of such according to scripture so we use Jesus because if we use a prophet or any other person Jesus is our pattern man at least God credited him and said I am well pleased so if you study Jesus he is perfect theology number one the first assignment of the Word of God is to build the character of Christ in the believer my apologies I have to rush the first assignment of the Word of God is to build the character of Christ in the believer this is what you call transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience it says my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you that formation of Christ is what we call character character is not just about resolutions it is something that comes from within you you will make resolutions and break them until something dies within you and the assignment of the Word of God is to grant you that capacity to evolve hallelujah number two the second assignment of the Word of God is for the renewal of your mind the renewal of your mind the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus Jesus did not just excel because he was the Son of God there was a mental construct he had allowed the Word of God to build a kind of thinking an approach to life that gave the Holy Spirit room to do mighty things through him and he says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus in Romans chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 and 2 he says I beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says and do not be conformed to this world the word world is the Greek word aeon it means the thinking pattern that comes with the age he says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind are we together number three what is the third assignment of the word the Word of God is the principal channel for accessing wisdom and understanding. The wisdom that comes from above. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse, uh, should, should that be 15 or so, it says all scripture, no 15, let's try 15, did I get that right? Yes, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise. You are made wise. Yes, there is the spirit of wisdom and all of that, but there is the stability. Let me tell you the truth. Honestly, the word of God contains the wisest perspective on all matters. If you submit yourself, when you find people demonstrate certain levels of godlike wisdom beyond that which is affordable as far as our civilization is concerned, it was outsourced from above through the word. The word can make men wise. It can culture your approach to life. It can bring dexterity and order to your life. Are we together? Wisdom and understanding. And finally, the fourth assignment of the word as revealed from scripture is that it empowers us to walk in authority. It empowers us to walk in authority. It empowers us to walk in authority. Everyone, especially in the New Testament and afterwards, who walked in authority, they were men and women of the word. When the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, they thought that they were drunk with new wine, 
And Peter said, no. He stilled them and said, this is that. And he began his exegesis right from prophet Joel to the psalmist. And he said, this same Jesus whom you have crucified, today he has been exalted as both Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard it, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what do we do? And he said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall also receive this promise. He says, for this promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, even to as many as are far off, those that the Lord will call. It is impossible to walk in authority outside of the word. My charge, therefore, is that we, we obtain grace from this teaching and all of the teachings before now and after now and submit ourselves to learn respectfully speaking especially if the call of God is on your life whether you have begun ministry or not you never outgrow learning the word of God your authority is a measure of the word of God that is resident within you it is written you may have heard me say is greater than I saw it is written is greater than I heard. No matter what you see and hear, it is written is above it. You can use it is written to rewrite any narrative. So if I wake up and have a negative dream, I saw, but I can use it is written to veto the outcome. Your life is at a risk if all you have is I saw. Your life is at a risk. And you see, prayer helps you to see. Prayer helps you to hear. But I hope you bring that prayer under the dominion of the word. Because I tell you, it is written is greater than I saw. It is written is greater than I heard. I saw, I heard can carry m m several margins of error based on your level of transformation. When you grow later, you find out what you saw was not correct. But this that is written remains, even in the realm of the spirit. Colossians 1 verse 16, let me wrap up exalts the word of God and shows the level, the extent of the dominion of the word of God. He says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. The scope of the impact of the word of God is beyond the visible realm. He says, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. My charge is that we obtain grace from God and bridge the age-long gap. Never watch people praying and say, these guys are just prayer, prayer people. They are just fanatics. Be careful because there may be something you are missing. There are many things you will never understand about the realm of the Spirit until you submit yourself to extended periods of prayer. Take note of my choice of words. Extended periods of prayer. I submit to you by the integrity of God's word. There are certain realms you may never understand the dynamics of their operation. There are certain levels of the presence, the Shekinah, the manifested presence of God that may never find expression in your life until you submit yourself to prayer with fasting. If I had the time, I would have told you what the fire of prayer does. Because the Bible says when the apostle caught the fell wood, remember in the book of Acts, there was a viper hiding there. The viper hid because the wood was so cold. The moment it was lit with fire, the viper that was hiding came out. It is impossible for anything to hide when you are on fire. In fact, Jesus was speaking about the deliverance. He said when a spirit leaves a man, it goes to a desert region. And without anybody casting it from the desert, it will run back to the man because a desert is a hot place. It was, it was just a prophetic message. He meets you cold even though swept and empty. It will gather others and bring there. No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. And listen, Jesus speaking about prayer said, my house not just the temple he's talking of you shall be called number one hold on hold on he leaves you with two options you are either called a house of prayer or a den of robbers because the thief is there ready to steal so you are either a house of prayer or your coldness makes you a den of robbers he will steal your joy steal your health steal any other thing you are either a house of prayer 
or a den of robbers. I choose to be a house of prayer. But then I trust God for grace and we thank God for the remarkable apostolic works that great men like Pastor Pojo are doing across with Wafbeck to be able to bridge the gross ignorance that is in the body of Christ. I apologize. Please let me one minute. Let me press on this. This is very important. I submit to you that there is a lot of random, uncoordinated knowledge within the body of Christ. Knowledge must be sequentially arranged. You see, knowledge is like a building. The Bible calls us spiritual houses. Do you build a foundation and put a zinc on it? Just because it is required in the building, there is timing and there is sequence. It is line upon line. So most believers freelance their knowledge. They add anything upon anything and it does not equal to the glory of God. It is time for us to reset literally. Some of us may need to go back to the drawing board and begin to examine the pillars. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6, six foundational doctrines that make up the believer's foundation. Six of them. Are we together now? From there it says, let's move on to perfection. There are other aspects, but first things first. It's a waste learning about prosperity where you are not saved. You've not learned about character, you are learning about money. You want to die, it will kill you. You must understand death to the flesh, then that will profit you. Are we together now? You are praying for increase and you have not built capacity in the spirit. The challenges that come with that increase, you will not be able to endure. So I'm hoping and trusting and I pray that God will help all of us, including myself, men and women of God across Nigeria, Africa, in this prophetic wave of revival that we must return to the place of doctrine. We must obtain grace to leave this celebrity Christianity and get serious with building God's people. According to Jeremiah 3.15, that we become pastors according to God's heart who will feed God's people with knowledge and with understanding. Let me rest my case. Please rise up on your feet. Just one prayer point. Father, I obtain grace to submit myself to prayer and the ministry of the word. Please lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Where I have de-emphasized or overemphasized, I obtain grace to balance my coordinates to make sure that I am robust and sound in the ministry of prayer with fasting, intimacy with the spirit and then the ministry of the word. I submit myself to learn doctrine. I submit myself to be methodically mentored. I obtain grace from you that I would be like the lamb's wife, equal in length, equal in breadth, with no exaggerations.